Hello everyone, welcome to my page. Today I'm going to show you how to make a custom 3D printed name tag keychain. I promised you guys this video so long ago and so here it is. I'm sorry that it took so long. This is what they look like and if you don't have a 3D printer you can also purchase these on my website. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to fonts.google.com and you want to choose a font. These fonts are available for commercial use so you can use them if you want to sell your keychains. You want to choose a font that when you expand the letters doesn't have any gaps or holes, something that allows your keychain to stay in one piece. You can see some examples here of ones that I've already done. You can see here that there's a little gap between the R and the E. This is what I'm talking about, and this is okay, but some of these fonts are not going to work, so this is your opportunity to sort of play around with it. Once you choose a font, then you're going to bring it onto a free program called Photopea and you just go to photopea.com. This is sort of a Photoshop alternative. You can import the font that you've downloaded to your computer into Photopea. You can type any name or phrase that you want and then you can look for the font. You can apply it and I recommend that you keep the stroke or the thickness of the font um, at at least a four or five, depending on the font that you're using, but you want to make it thick enough. I didn't do that in this particular keychain, and you'll see what happens later on. Once you're done, you save that to an SVG file, and you can save it anywhere on your computer. And then once you're done with that, then we bring it into another program called Tinkercad. Now, the first thing that you want to do in Tinkercad is you want to create the ring for your keychain. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. But when you create this ring, you want to save it and then you want to duplicate it so that when you open a new file, it opens it with the key ring ready to go. And then you also save it in a file for use later on so that you don't have to make one every single time that you make a new keychain. So I'm going to show you how to make that here. You're going to use the cylinder shape and you basically take a solid cylinder shape and a whole cylinder shape and you put one inside the other. The measurement for the outside one is going to be 0.3 and the measurement for the inside one is going to be 0.15 for both sides. And then you can see here how it shortens. And then the height for it is going to be 0 0.08. So you take those and you click on it. You can set the measurement on the width and the length and the height. And it's going to be 0.15 for the middle part, 0.3 for the outer part and 0 0.08 for the height on both of those. Then you're going to put it in the center. You're going to click on the button to align them, click on the little middle circles, and then you're going to click on the top right button to group them. When you group them, then it's going to show you the hole in the middle. And now you can see that it's exactly like the one that I created before. So next, now we can you can see how I can duplicate it and then it creates a new file. And now we can start with a brand new ring that we don't have to create over and over again. Okay, so now we can align this here a little bit so we can see better. And we're going to import our SVG file that we saved from Photopea. You import it as art. Uh, you can keep it the same size or make it smaller, it doesn't matter. We're going to make it smaller right here, and I'll show you how. You want to click on the little corner diamond. And oh, first you want to uh, make your measurements metric um, so that it's changed to inches. And then you want to make it to 1 64th of an inch so that when you move things around, it moves it a lot more smoothly and you can get uh, more accuracy. So then you want to click on the corner, click shift, and then click on the corner and then make it smaller. Make sure that you click shift, otherwise it's going to make it all distorted. Uh, and now we can zoom in here and we can sort of align our name tag. And you want to, on the top right corner, increase the quality all the way up so that your edges are nice and smooth. 
and then you want to click on the top left hand corner to duplicate the name. You also want to increase the height to 0.25, which is a quarter inch. And then you want to click on the top left to duplicate it. You want to make four of the same. And then you want to drag each one so that you can see all four of them separately. Now, the first one is going to stay default and it's going to stay at 0.25. The second one is going to be a silhouette and the measurement is going to go down to 0.18. The third one, the, it's going to go to outer line and the measurement is going to also, I believe, stay at 0.18. And then the outer one is also going, the last one is also going to be outer line and the measurement is going to be 0.11. Um, you can do two instead of three. You can play around with this. You can make it wider. Uh, the line width, uh, I usually make it between 0 0.3, 0 0.5, depending on the name. You can make it 0 0.8, uh, depending on the letters, if they're too narrow and you have to widen it and expand it more. The idea here is that the third name is the taller one and the thinner one. And the last one, the one at the very bottom, is going to be your shortest one at 0.11, and it's also going to be your widest one, your one that really keeps your letters together. You see how I didn't do it right here? And you can, you click on the button to group, right? But you can always spread them apart again and try again. And so that's what I did here because I kind of forgot the exact order in how I did it, but you can see how. I fixed it once I get the measurements correct here. So you can play around with this um, depending on how, what font you select, um, then you're going to have maybe, I wouldn't change the height, I would keep the height the same, but maybe you have different thickness, you, you know, have different spacing between your letters, you have different heights, things like that. So this is, again, your opportunity to sort of play around with it and maybe even change the whole style of it. So now you can see that we have more of a three-layered name tag, but I think that this is still too thin so i'm going to change the line width over here to about one and then i change the line width on the middle one again to make it a little bit thicker so again you just keep playing around until you find something that looks good to you this looks pretty good and now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to drag our key ring over here. This is where you need to have it at 1 64th of an inch on the bottom right so that you can drag this key ring and make it more accurate. The idea here is that you have most of the key ring within the keychain so that it creates a strong bond when you 3D print it and you don't lose your keychain as you're using it. And then you want to click on the top right to group these two, otherwise it's not gonna work right. And then the next thing that we do is we export this and we bring it into our 3D slicer. So we are almost done. You can see that the height is a quarter inch and make sure that you keep the height measurements at a quarter inch, uh, the 0.18 and the 0.11 and the 0 0.08 height for the little key ring. We're going to save this to our computer here and make sure that you save it as an STL file. Then we're going to bring it into the slicer program for our particular printer. Mine is the bamboo slicer. We're going to look for this in the computer here, import it, and now you can see that we have our key ring. We're almost done. So the next thing that we're going to do is colorize it. And for that, we have to first cut it. So I'm gonna choose some colors here real quick. We're gonna choose three colors for all three of our layers. And then if you have a bamboo printer, this is how you will slice it and make the different colors. So you click on the little slicing tool at the top menu, and then you can use your mouse to move the level up and down find the correct level right above the middle layer 
and then make sure that you click on cut to parts. Otherwise, it's not going to be right. That looks about right. Change this to cut the parts and then perform the cut. It might take a little while. Once that's done, then we go ahead and move down. Click again on the cut tool, move down to the next layer. Make sure that you are right above where it switches. Cut to parts, perform the cut. It's going to take a while. And now you can see that we have three separate layers. So now we can go here on the left hand side and we can change the colors. Make the bottom part black and we'll keep the middle part yellow. We'll make the top white. And voila. Now that we have our keychain done, we can also add a charm to it if you want. We can slice the plate. And you can see here the error that I made that I was talking about before where I made the font too thin. You can see how there's a gap on the bottom of the Y because and that was a mistake with the font. It was too thin. So make sure that when you create your font in Photopea that you add a stroke that makes your font thick enough so the 3D printer will be able to connect all of your lines and you won't have that little gap on the bottom. But this was just a little test print that I made for this video and for my niece. So it'll be okay for just this once. Um, you can also add a charm to it. This is what it looks like in the end. You can use the shapes that are available in Tinkercad. Just save them as STL files. And then, of course, you can attach your key ring to it. And this is what the final product looks like. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions or if there's anything that I missed in this video, you're welcome to hit my DM. Like I said, these keychains are available on my online shop if you want to support me and purchase one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.